Sina al-Jabal is a monumental area that lies 12 kilometers northeast of Elminia. Its history goes back to the Old Kingdom period, but there are constructions that belong to the Greek-Roman period as well, the most important of which is a temple of Neron. Elminia Governorate is one of the richest cities of Egypt in the field of monuments. It's characterized by joining between ancient Egyptian and Greek and Roman and Coptic and Egyptian monuments. The mountainous area, 10 kilometers northeast of Elminia, comprises a monastery where Egyptian monks lived secluded from the modern crowded world. Few kilometers to the east lies the cemeteries of the buried city of Tehna al Jabal. The prominent cemetery is called Fraser Tombs. It's a mountainous hill from rock cut tombs that belong to the Old Kingdom. They were cut during the reign of King Weserkaf, who ruled from 2494 till 2487 BC and was the first king of the 5th dynasty. Together with Tehna the city, they composed the burial places of the famous city of Tehna Jabal or Tehna of the mountain. Tehna lies 5 kilometers east to Elminia city. Its ancient name was and its history goes back to the Old Kingdom. Amongst its important monuments are three temples that were built during the Greek-Roman period, as well as tombs that belong to the Old Kingdom and reused during the Greek-Roman period, in addition to Coptic tombs dating to the 5th and 6th centuries. In 1893, Fraser discovered the names of King Miserinius or Minkaura, the owner of the Third Pyramid of Giza, and King Wesekaf inside these tombs. Tehna al-Jabal is composed mainly of a Ptolemaic city that is still under excavation. The city is almost 2,000 years old. None of the excavated areas could be seen, as the exploring mission refilled the discovered places with sand and rubble in 1983, and the fillings took place inside the walls and the buildings to protect them until their excavation work is resumed. Walking above the buried city would be walking 30 meters higher than the ground. The walls of the ancient city were quite high that they reached almost six stories. They were the ancient Egyptians who had constructed brick buildings here, followed by the Greeks, then the Romans, then the Coptics. The tops of the rooms of the buildings could be seen, as well as a nilometer. The ruined city comprises three temples that belong to the Greek-Roman period, the most important of which is a temple that lies in the northern part of the city. It's a temple of the Roman Emperor Neron. Beside it is a temple constructed previously to the Roman era. It's a temple of King Tutmosis III from the New Kingdom. This king was famous of his campaigns and travels in and out of Egypt. He had ruled from 1458 till 1427 BC. Neron Temple is reached through steps that lead to an open court. The base of the temple is composed of limestone. Then mud bricks were built above it, turning the temple into a three-story building. Cartouches bearing royal names were carved at the front. This temple was consecrated to Gatsobek, the crocodile. Sobek is one of the most important ancient Egyptian deities that was worshipped in the shape of a crocodile since the prehistoric ages. 
according to his nature, he was a god of water and the lord of the marshes where he dwells. His cult started in El Fayum since the first dynasty and was mentioned in the pyramids texts as a son of goddess Neet. During the 12th dynasty, his chapels were widespread in many places, but basically in old Shedet or the recent Fayum, which was the of the kings of the 12th dynasty. The second center of Sobek's cult was in Komombo in Upper Egypt, where he and his wife Hathor and their son Khonso shared the temple with God Horus and his family there. Sobek's cult continued throughout different ages until the Greek-Roman period. His temples included lakes and ponds filled with water for his living, and after his death he was mummified. He was pictured either in his complete form of a crocodile or in the form of a human body with a crocodile's head, topped with two feathers and two bull's thorns in the middle of which is a sun disk. The festivals list in Komombo mentions God Sobek's festivities to be celebrated in the second day of the second month of the flood season and in the first day of Tuba month that was a day when his enemies surrendered to him. was a Roman emperor who ruled Egypt from 54 to 68 AD. Although he was known for his instability and extremism, yet he was interested in literature and art. His major constructional building in Egypt was in Tehna in El Minya Governorate. His temple was consecrated to Gatsobek the crocodile. Offerings were presented to Sobek inside the sanctuary, where they were placed above the altar. Gathabi, the Nile god, kneels down by the entrance, holding a tray bearing symbols of the cities of Egypt. In front of him are two cartouches of Emperor Neron. Just like the ancient Egyptian temples, a special room was built for the burials of the crocodile mummies. Two of them were found in Neron temple. The birth chamber of Neron is similar to any mummizi found in a temple where a triad was worshipped. Since Sobek is here, then the rest of his family are here too. They are his wife goddess Hathor and their son Horus. Sobek here takes the form of God Khinum. Other gods are there too, like God Anubis, the god of the cemetery. The Mamizi of Neron's temple is a way by which he tried to legitimize his ruling to the country, which was passed to him after he married the daughter of Emperor Claudius. Being born as a son of a god, he would have the right to rule. It was offered to him by the gods and goddesses of Egypt. Today, the local barren women believe that if they pass through an isle around here, they will be able to conceive and have children. They do that on Fridays, which is a weekly holiday in Egypt. Hello and welcome to Egypt. Where are you from? 
I'm from France. Uh, have you been to Egypt before? Uh, no, it's my first time. What have you seen so far? Uh, I have seen Cairo and Aswan. And I arrived in Luxor uh, yesterday evening. Okay, what about Luxor? What have you seen in Luxor? Uh, for the moment, I've seen New Gorna, the village uh, by Hassan Fati. And I arrived here in the West Bank, uh, big complex of temples. And it's my first temple, Habu Temple. Habu Temple, yeah. yeah? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's what I know. <laughs> okay, what, uh, what's your impression about uh, Habu Temple, for example? Uh, it's very huge, it's uh, amazing because the space for me is very important. I'm an architect, so I don't look at the uh, science. Uh, Sto stories. In the stories, yeah, I, I don't understand it much, but uh, I'm really impressed by the space, uh, the, the, the columns and the composition and it's difficult to imagine how it was before, but it's already impressive to see it now. Well, actually, before it was colored and totally finished with ceilings and everything. Mm -hmm. But when you think that all this work was done by hands thousands of years ago, uh, what's, your, what's your opinion about that? Oh, it must have been a great uh, time. <laughs> a very, very long work. From an architect uh, point of view, uh, you can see that these buildings are still ex existing in a very good condition till today. What, what do you say about that? That's a great job. <laughs> a great, it's, it has been done very well, if, if it remains still today. Well, it, I think the, it's difficult to, to keep it in, in good state, because... Uh, it's an open air. Yeah, it, it's you. You can either conserve it, and it has it doesn't have the same spirit as it had, or you can let it be like it is, and little by little it will be destroyed. But it still keeps the spirit. All right. So you think that uh, it n they need to be more preserved than being kept no, in open air? I don't. I don't think it needs to be more preserved. Okay. I think it's all right like this. It's all right like that. Yeah, maybe uh, the, the, the stones themselves, they, w they don't need anything. They are the witness of the time passing by. But uh, maybe uh, the, the environment around the temples should be preserved, like less mass tourism with less buses and <laughs> less trash on the, on the streets. So I think Egyptian people are very nice. And tourism is uh, sometimes one side is good, one side is bad. Yeah. So it would be good for Egypt to have uh, a more uh, sustainable tourism from now. Yeah, we also hope so. <laughs> thank you so much for our guest from France today. Uh, thank you, and I hope that you enjoy the rest of your tours in Egypt. Of course, thank you. one of the most ancient ruins of Tehn al-Jabal, 12 kilometers northeast of El Minya. Behind me is a temple of King Ramesses III, who owns a great temple in Luxor called Habu Temple. But here in Tehn, he has also another great temple, and the whole area is still under restoration. Few kilometers east to El Minya city lies a monumental area of Tehn which comprises a number of Old Kingdom rock tombs that were reused during the Greek-Roman period. The area comprises also tombs from the 20th dynasty and the Sawian period. A lot of monuments are still buried under the ruins of the ancient city. Above the ground are chapels and temples, including King Ramesses III Temple. Although the pharaohs of the New Kingdom lived in Thebes or the modern Luxor, yet their constructional plans spread to reach all the major cities around the country. Ramesses III owned a complete settlement in the west bank of Luxor called Habu City. 
There, he had constructed a memorial temple consecrated to God Amon. His temple there is unique with its out-of-the-stereotype pylons design, as its front walls are two giant fortress form gates. In Tehna, Ramesses' third temple is unique as well as Habu. It's totally cut out in the rocks. The columns are topped with the known Hathoric heads, which holds Hathor's face and the cow's ears. In the open court of the temple, there is a shaft in its middle, which could be consecrated to the burial of the animal selected by the priests to be sanctified. Behind the open court is the sanctuary where the altar is found. This temple was well known during the Middle Kingdom as it's built over the ruins of a temple that belonged to that period. Writings about that buried temple underneath Ramesses III temple were found in Bani Hassan, which was the burial area of the 16th gnome to which Tehnal Gabal belonged. In the small temple beside it, many sacrificial elements and offerings were found. Excavations have been done in 1983 by a Japanese geological expedition. Beyond doubt, this monumentally rich ground needs a lot of work concerning excavations and restorations, for it's composed of several layers of civilization buried on top of each other and belonging to the ancient Egyptian history starting from the beginning of Zero Dynasty till the late period. Thank you.